Okay, welcome back to creating a cryptocurrency in Python. In the last video, we started to work on the register page. And uh, what I did and I, uh, was I cleaned it up a bit here and formatted it so it looks a bit nicer. And I will go ahead and provide this code in the description below. So you can go ahead and download it if you like. Um, well, actually, I recommend that you do. And the reason I didn't code it with you guys is just because it was just some uh, HTML stuff and it would have uh, taken a little bit of time that we could have been spending on Python coding. So I'll just show you what it looks like. Uh, it looks like this right now. So we have kind of this grayed out filler text here um, instead of like the weird formatting we had in the last video. So it does look a bit nicer. Um, so what we'll go ahead and code is the uh, messages and the um, form formatting that we'll use in the future for every time we create one of these forms. So inside of our templates folder, I'm gonna create a new folder called include. And in there, I'm going to create a new file called underscore messages dot HTML and another file called underscore form helpers dot HTML. So inside of our form helpers file, we're going to create a macro render field. And we're going to embed that code, that Python code in our HTML. And then we're going to do field dot label. field asterisk asterisk keywords and safe and then we'll say if field dot errors so this is if an error pops up in our form if one of the validators are um, false then we're going to deal with that by printing the error. So we're going to create a for loop and we're going to loop through each error. And then we're going to use a span to print that error. Like so. And this inline Python code, um, this is the flask style. So they use curly brackets and percent. And you also have to end each block. So as you see, we created an if statement. We have to end that if statement. We created a for loop. We have to end that for loop. And that's just the syntax of flask. So percent and macro. So that's going to be our form helpers file. Then our messages file. We're going to do something similar. Um, this is going to be for the flash messages that we are displaying. So we want to display some mes messages to the user when they're logged in or they're on a page they're not supposed to be on, say, uh, unauthorized or welcome, something like that. So if we do have these messages, so we're going to have an if statement. So if there are messages, then we're going to loop through each category in the message, which is going to be like success, um, danger. So for category and message in the messages, we're going to have a div um, alert like that. And then we're going to just display the message. And we'll create these messages as we go along in the future from Python using uh, some some something like flash um, unauthorized. 
paste, and then danger. And so danger would be the category, and then the message would be unauthorized. And that's how we're actually gonna call these messages going forward. So now let's end the for loop. And we'll also end the if statement. And we'll end the with statement. And then we're going to also display errors and um, success messages. So we're going to do an if statement for if we have an error. And then we'll use a div to display that error similar to this one here. And the category will be danger. And instead of message, it'll be error. Perfect. Then we'll end that if statement. And we'll do something similar for our success messages. So if we have a message, then we will alert success um, message and end the if statement, just like that. So those are our includes files. Um, those will be very useful going forward. And um, now we can kind of move back to our Python code and start to get the form working. I just had a couple print statements here. They're kind of unnecessary. For now, okay, so um, I'll just delete this stuff here because I don't think you guys have that. And, uh, oh yes, I've added the users table here. So we're looking at the users in MySQL. And then this if statement here is going to check that the user has clicked the submit button right here on our form, the register button and that all of these fields have been entered correctly. So if that is the case, then we can start to pull data from the form. So we can collect the username from form.username.data. We can get the user's email, form.email.data, and we can get the user's name from form.name.data. <clears throat> Now we want some code here to say like, if new user or something, we wanna, we wanna be able to see that this user doesn't already exist here. So right now I'm just gonna leave it as if true. So this if statement will automatically enter. And I'm gonna leave a little comment and say, we wanna say, check if new user. Yes, like that. And we want to then take, if it is a new user, we'll collect their password as a SHA-256 hash. So you shot 256 under crypt dot encrypt form dot password dot data. Then we will insert into the users table this new user, like so. And then we want some method here to log in the user. So let's define that as log underscore in underscore user and username. And we will leave that up here for now. And we'll come back to that later. And then we'll return a redirect to uh, our dashboard, which we haven't created yet. So let's create a dashboard. So the user, when, for when the user is logged in. And then say that um, this is not a new user, so we'll do this before. We'll um, use a flash message, which we just defined in the includes file here. We'll say user already exists, and that will be a danger message. And then we'll return a redirect to the, to the register page again. So let's define this, uh, this dashboard here. So let's do app.root. Uh, slash dashboard, um, define dashboard, return 
render template dashboard dot html and inside of here we'll create dashboard dot html and let's just put a simple h1 tag for dashboard cool just like that okay now let's let's see how our form is working here so let's go on to our register page let me enter my name here a username, an email, and let me do a password. And I'll click register. Okay, so now it's taken me to the dashboard. And I'm going to go to MySQL and make sure that this user has been entered. And it has. So see, I've uh, the new user has been entered and the password hash has been entered correctly. So now we can move on to making sure that this uh, user is in fact a new user. And we can also code for this login user so that when we go to the dashboard, it's personalized. It'll say something like welcome will. So let's start with checking if we have a new user. So let's create a function is new user. And um, we will check, we will create that in our SQL helpers file. Oh, and I did create this method actually already in the two videos ago. So we will use this method is new user. So what we're doing here is we're getting, we're collecting all of the users from the user table and then we're checking if that username is, is, is already in the MySQL table. So we're gonna use that method here if is new user, username. Cool. And then if it's not a new user, we're gonna go here. So let's actually test that. Let's let's try and register a user that already exists, which is the one I just created. So that should be if I enter Will Assad here, we should get an error. So let me try this. Um, okay, and it looks like it didn't work. Um, yeah, so this code is working. There was an error here. This was a new user. However, our, our flash message didn't work and we will get that to work in the future. Um, I'll have to figure out what's wrong with that. So let's code this login user function here so that our users can log in. So inside of there, we're going to want to collect some information about the user. So let's load our users table. like that. And then let's collect the user's data by using users.get1, username, and then the username that is passed as an argument. Then using our session, we will say logged in is equal to true. Um, session at username is going to be equal to username and then session of name is going to be user dot get name and then session email will equal user dot get email like that and then on the dashboard we can um we can pass the session um, as a parameter. So we can say session equals session, like so. And then here we can say welcome session dot get name. So now when we register a new user, so let's register John Doe. John Doe, gmail.com, and I'll just make the password John because it doesn't really 
really matter. Now, see, we have welcome John Doe, just like that. Cool. So I'll see you guys in the next video.